Welcome back to the portfolio everyone and today we're doing a big comparison of some of the largest telecommunication companies on the market AT&T versus Verizon. We're going to determine which company is best to hold in within your portfolio. We're going to talk about if it's best to hold one of these over the other and we're going to compare which company is better for the long term. With the future of 5G coming very soon, both of these companies will extremely benefit and we're going to go over which one may do better than others and we're going to compare their current fundamentals to determine right now which one may be the best buy for our dividend growth portfolios. So as always everyone, I'm the Gen Z investor and I make videos every single day that talk about different stocks you can buy for your portfolio, overall stock market performance and any big news or headlines within the stock market. So I make these daily videos so I'm going to ask you to please like and subscribe and we're going to get right into it. Very quick update on my portfolio, current at a value at $47,166. We saw a good day in the green today, up over $585, but overall portfolio is still down around 8.36%. Not too worried about it. Over the long term, the price will come back. I'm going to keep collecting my dividends, reinvesting, and watching it grow over the long term. So we're going to jump right into the comparison. So we're going to do a breakdown between AT&T and Verizon talk about some of the key metrics with regard to each company and just determine which one may be the best buy right now and which one may, might be the best for your portfolio over the long term. First, we're going to do a quick comparison on how the share price has performed over the past five years for each company. So AT&T currently trading just shy of $30 a share on the one year chart is down 11.56%. So of course, they were trading up higher, then the pandemic hit, we saw them drop all the way down to $26 and have not fully recovered back to those levels and are still trading around $30 per share. With regard to Verizon, on the past one year, they are only down around 4.79%. They have seen that March dip, but have what somewhat recovered and are trading just shy of their pre-pandemic level, but they are only down 5% on the one-year chart. If we compare the five-year charts, you can see Verizon's actually up 15%, so they have some modest share price appreciation over the past five years, compared to AT&T, who's actually still down close to 15% on the five-year chart. Of course, share price is not everything. They do pay different dividends, so of course, we look at total return overall to compare the two. But if you're looking for a little bit of share price appreciation for your portfolio, Verizon has shown that they have actually outperformed AT&T in that regard over the past five years. Now we're going to take a look at this comparison. We're going to go metric by metric and determine which company actually beats the other. So of course, some metrics may people may value more than others, but we're just as a kind of a solid breakdown to show this quick comparison between these two companies. The first thing we're going to compare is the market cap. Of course, this does not really show how a company is performing right now, but it's a good thing just to start off with. So AT&T has a market cap around $212 billion, compared to Verizon, who has a market cap around $225 billion. So we jump over back to this comparison. Verizon actually does beat AT&T in this first battle. They do have the Heiser, higher mark cap right now around by about $13 billion. But of course, this does change with regard to share price. So if AT&T has a better day than Verizon on the market, this mark cap gap will like, you know, shutter and goes closer together. And of course, Verizon, if they have a better day than AT&T, this gap in mark cap could grow. But of course, this mark cap does not mean too much. Why I started off with it to show you that these companies are of somewhat equal size. One company is not dramatically larger than the other, and one is not a tiny company versus a large. They are very large companies, so it's better to compare these two massive companies together. The next one we're going to take a look at right here, if I move down this block, is total revenue. So of course, these companies operate in the same sector. They have a similar mark cap, so I thought we'd compare total revenue. So if we jump over to the income statement for AT&T, you can see here total revenue is around $179 billion in the past 12 months, compared to Verizon, who's generated around $131 billion over the last 12 months. So with regard to revenue, AT&T wins this battle. They have more revenue in the past 12 months, even though right now they have a smaller mark cap than Verizon. The next thing we're going to take a look at is net income. So even though they are both generating huge amounts of revenue, how much net income are they actually providing for shareholders into the company? So if we take a look, in at and past 12 months, they've generated around $14.4 billion of net income, compared to Verizon, who has brought in $18.4 billion of net income. So if we look at this comparison, we can see that even though at and brought in more revenue, Verizon actually earned greater profits in the past 12 months. 
And what that shows is that Verizon actually has a higher payer rate, profit margin, which is what the next comparison is. So profit margin is the amount of profit divided by total revenue. So you can see here that Verizon actually has a 14% profit margin compared to AT&T's 8%. So of course the higher profit margin wins and Verizon wins that battle. The next battle we want to do to compare these companies is the payout price to earnings ratio. So this PE ratio is a forward PE ratio. And if you purchase AT&T right now, you're buying a forward PE of $9.33. So for every $1 of company earnings, you are paying $9.33, the price to earnings ratio. And with regard to for Verizon, you can see here a PE ratio in the forward of around 11.46. So the higher PE ratio for Verizon, but of course you are purchasing AT&T for a cheaper rate right now. So AT&T actually wins this battle with regard to forward PE. The next thing we're going to take a look at is the dividend yields. So of course, as dividend growth investors, we like dividend income. We like that consistent dividend income coming in each and every year. And we like companies that have a good history of growing that dividend every year. So if we were to purchase AT&T right now, we'd our starting yield would be around 7%. With that 7% yield, we'd get an annual dividend payout of $2.08 per share. And they have a beautiful dividend growth history of 36 years. AT&T has only grown their dividend by around 2% average over the past five years, which is not the best, but of course that just means your dividend is growing at the same rate as inflation each and every year. With that 36 year dividend growth history, it just shows that even through recessions and economic booms, AT&T has been able to weather all the storms and continue to grow their dividend for a very long time. And of course, if they can maintain their dividend growth for the next 14 years, they will become that dividend king at the 50 year mark for dividend growth. Now, if we take a look at Verizon's dividend scorecard, you can see lower current yield, but still on the high side, around 4.52%. Annual dividend growth rate on the past five years at 2.5%. So they slightly beat AT&T with regard to dividend growth, but not by much. And they have a much shorter dividend growth history of only 13 years. So AT&T has much more time growing their dividend compared to Verizon. But of course, we're looking for the future. We really don't care about the past too much. It is important to take a look at. So if Verizon's dividend growth history was only at like two or three years compared to AT&T's 36, that'd be a huge sway. But the fact that Verizon still has a 13 year dividend growth history still brings me a little bit of confidence that they have the ability to maintain and grow that dividend be into the future because they have done it for the past 13 years. So with regard to dividend, there's a couple different metrics we're going to take a look at. The first one is how safe is that dividend? So AT&T has a dividend safety score of 65 and their dividend is considered safe. If you compare that to Verizon, who has a dividend safety score of 87 and their dividend is actually said to be very safe right now, Verizon wins that battle. So it's very nice to jump in on high dividends, which AT&T wins right here with that 7% yield, but we want to make sure that dividend's safe. It's great to jump in at a high yield, but if that dividend is going to be cut within the next 6 to 18 months, then that high yield basically gets wiped away and it wasn't worth it in the long run. But so with regard to dividend safety, Verizon actually wins that battle. So, so far, these companies are very similar. Mark cap, although Verizon wins, I don't really value that as a very strong metric to compare the two companies. So far, we've done six other metrics and three wins for AT&T, three wins for Verizon. The next thing we're talking about now is the earnings per share payout ratio. So this is the most common payout ratio used when investors are determining how much a company is paying out as a dividend and if they're able to sustain and grow that dividend over the long term. So the lower the pay, lower the payout ratio, the safer the dividend. And of course, that is the company that wins that battle. And this is Verizon. So they have a payout ratio for earnings per share at around 55%. So they have the lower of the earnings per share payout ratios and they actually win this battle. And how AT&T has a payout ratio of 103% is if we jump over to their income statement, you can see here that AT&T payout ratio is around 103%. So they are actually earning $1.97 per share. But even though they're earning $1.97, they are paying out $2.06 per share. So they are paying out more dividend per share than they are actually earning in net income per share. So that is how that payout ratio is actually over 100%. So over the long term, that can become unsustainable because if the company is only earning $197 in income per share, how can they afford to pay out $2.06, which is higher than their income per share each and every year over the long term? So AT&T has got to do a better job of growing their income in order to 
bring down that earnings per share payout ratio to continue to grow the business and that dividend over the long term. There's one other form of payout ratio that we're going to take a look at that a lot of other investors really value in their dividend decision making. It is the free cash flow payout ratio. So it's just another form of payout ratio that shows how much is being paid out as a dividend with regard to free cash flow per share. So if we take a look at AT&T's cash flow statement, you can see here that free cash flow per share is around $3.71 and they are paying out that $2.08 per share. So they're paying out $2.08 per share as a dividend, but they're bringing in $3.71 per share in free cash flow, which is a much better ratio, which is why their free cash flow pay ratio is around 56%. Verizon comes in very close second with around a 58% free cash flow pay ratio, but AT&T actually does win this battle. The final battle on our list today is the current ratio. So the current ratio actually jumps over to the balance sheet and it takes into consideration a company's total current assets compared to their total current liabilities. So this shows how liquid and how safe the company is over the next 12 months. So we take a look at AT&T, they have total current assets at around $52.7 billion. Meanwhile, they have total current liabilities at around $69.7 billion. So they have more current liabilities than they do current assets do within the next 12 months. So that's why their current payer ratio, current ratio, sorry, is around 0.77, which is below one. If you take a look at Verizon's, you can see their current ratio is almost actually very close to being one. At the bare minimum, you want to have your company's current ratio to be out of one, just to show they have enough current assets on hand in order to pay off all current liabilities. So Verizon is just there. They are extremely close to being at that one. Well, being at a one current ratio is not the safest. It's very nice to see companies have a current ratio of around 1.5 or 2. Just shows that they have a lot more current assets on hand to handle all of those total current liabilities without worry. And they can pay off all their debts within the next 12 months and continue to grow their operations very nicely. So we take a look at this comparison. Verizon 1, I'm going to include Mark Cap in this count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different battles compared to AT&T who has won 4. So with these comparisons, Verizon does show to be this better company. But of course, this is a very top line, very quick comparison. By no means is this enough to make the decision on which one to hold over the other. And of course, people have different needs. People who have investing needs right now where they need income right now, they will choose at t because it offers a much higher dividend yield currently over the long term. And with regard to 5G, I believe both these companies are going to flourish and see greater revenues and nice net income growth because of 5G. So, of course, that is going to play into this effect and that's really going to affect how these numbers are. If you like companies who are revenue machines and you want to go with at t of course, they are generating higher revenues. If you like companies, personally, I like companies with higher profit margins and Verizon, of course, shows that with a 14% profit margin compared to at and 8%. But overall, these are both solid companies. And with the new trading platforms out there that allow free share purchases, fractional shares, it might honestly be worth it to hold both at and and Verizon within your portfolio so you get the best of both worlds. You're a little bit diversity diversified between two different companies. So if one company is a bad headline it doesn't, and the stock goes down, your whole telecommunications part of your portfolio does not go down because you're holding both. And they actually both generate revenue. Of course, they operate within the same sector, but they both have different streams of generating revenue from different force sources. So of course, it may be beneficial to actually hold both within your dividend portfolio. So that was my comparison of at and Verizon. Of course, do all your own research before you make a decision on which company you want to buy. But of course, in the long run, both these companies are going to survive, continue to do well, and can collect those nice dividends. Of course, we will have to see what happens over the long term to do it comparison and maybe in a year from now i will do a recap video to see what's changed between these two companies but i do appreciate you tuning in please like and subscribe and i will see you in tomorrow's video